a $50 Ryokan versus a $500 Ryokan. Let's find out the differences. No trip to Japan is complete without staying at a Ryokan. A Ryokan is basically a traditional Japanese hotel. Ryokans maintain an authentic atmosphere, which is more important than the latest technological advances. Now before we jump into the luxurious $500 Ryokan, let's kick it off at the $50 Ryokan Gaku Guest House in Gora Hakone. Gaku Guest House is the cheapest Ryokan I could find nearby the ridiculous Unison Water Park. For only 50 bucks, I had my own Japanese-style room with shared facilities. Let's see what 50 bucks gets you in the Hakone region. Gaku has a shared kitchen. This place is great, it has everything you need for a comfortable stay. And only for 50 bucks. Can't go wrong with the Gaku guest house. A shared living room. This brand new billiard stable in the garage. And even a rooftop with great views of Gora. Wow, welcome to Gora. It's really unfortunate that the weather is not that great, but this whole foggy atmosphere is very interesting. Oh man, what's that? Now the shed facilities, as you can see, it's pretty decent, very clean. The laundry machine, quality bidet, very nice. Oh, good shower. Great amenities, great amenities. Luckily, strong Wi-Fi is provided, which is not all too common for Ryokans. And my room for today, Tsubaki. All right, let's see what a Tsubaki room really feels like. First off, you take off your shoes. You got some slippers here. Information. Yeah, you, the English is out of control here. My Japanese style room was pretty spacious, decked out with these tatami mats, which are made from rice straws. Futons, and sleeping beds right here. Basically roll those out and you make your own bed. These are very comfortable, by the way. This is a traditional way of sleeping in Japan. Up there, you put your insubordinate friends. Can you imagine someone just jumping out of the closet? Now, this may be one of the most important things I'm going to tell you. In Japan, Often they have no earth-rooted power socket. So you have to get a special converter for that because the North American power sockets usually have a third plug. Balcony. Welcome to Gora. It is unbelievable how quiet it is out here. If you compare this to the inner city of Tokyo, holy smokes, it's night, night and day difference. And not to forget, a air conditioning unit. So 50 bucks, 50 bucks for this room. For a one night stay, not bad. Next, I will show you guys what a $500 Ryokan looks like for just one night. Hotel Senkei is conveniently located near the Yumoto Hakone train station. Once you check in, you'll be guided to your private Japanese styled room. Now, the first room you'll enter is called the Agari Kamachi. In this area, you will take off your shoes because shoes are not allowed inside of a Ryokan. Then jump into a Yukata, which is a Japanese styled rope, which is what you will wear throughout your stay here at the Ryokan, including these traditional Japanese tabi socks. As you may have noticed, I'm already fully dressed in a Yukata. The most notable feature of a Ryokan are these tatami mats used for flooring. Tatami mats are actually quite comfortable to walk on. Konnichiwa! This is the bathroom. Our Japanese style room did include a private bathroom with a bathtub, a shower area, and this super advanced Japanese bidet toilet with lots of butt washing features. Wash your ass and stop washing your ass. And this, I guess, is the strength and a bunch of other stuff. Shoji are the paper sliding doors separating the rooms within a ryokan. The balcony is actually pretty cool. Oh, it's still raining. This typhoon is crazy. It's been raining all day non-stop and tomorrow is going to be even crazier. Oh yes, and I cannot leave out the best part, guys. Check this out. A full-blown fridge. Ho, 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 ho. Because the Masahi, Sapporo, Pokari Sweat. A bunch of beers, some sake. This lovely lady is called a Nakai a Japanese housemaid. You start off with some tea, some green tea. The Nakai will serve you warm green tea, dinner, breakfast, and prepares the sleeping area. The legless chairs are called Zaizu. These chairs can be a bit uncomfortable to sit on for non-Japanese people, but as you can see, I'm trying my best. Now, absolutely the best thing about staying at a Ryokan is the Kaiseki dinner, since Japanese cuisine is an integral part of the Ryokan experience. Our Nakai served us a multi-course Kaiseki dinner presented with great elegance. Just look at this colorful array of dishes. Guys, it's dinner time here at the Ryokan. We got an amazing meal here. This looks incredible. As the Japanese say, itadakimasu. The service here is insane. Mmm, oh man. The level of detail is just unprecedented. I mean, look at this little thing. How cute does that look? Oh man, saba. I freaking love saba. Wow, this looks like shrimp surimi. Wow. 
Guys, this is delicious. Kaiseki dinners largely consists out of a lot of vegetables with some fish and meat. A little meal is, I think, done. I think that's already done. Our Kaiseki dinner did include sukiyaki meat, which you dip in a stirred up egg. Mm. Oh, jeez, Louise. <laughs> More food is coming. After dinner is done, the Nakai will prepare the sleeping futons, which are Japanese traditional kilts. In the morning, it's time for the Japanese hot springs, called onsen. As you can see, it's raining like crazy. It's a typhoon. It's been raining non-stop for the last 48 hours. Ariokan had a private onsen on the rooftop with a beautiful view of the mountains. Now before you go to an onsen in Japan, please realize that you gotta be completely naked and make sure to scrub and wash yourself thoroughly before you jump in. Oh my god guys, I cannot believe this never ending rain. Ending our stay with a gigantic Japanese breakfast, again consisting out of a huge array of dishes. The attention to detail in Japan is just unmatched. It was actually super cozy staying in a ryokan during this crazy typhoon weather. Now keep in mind guys, that traditional Japanese ryokans do not offer Wi-Fi in your room. Just remember that you come to a ryokan for an authentic Japanese experience. So no distractions guys, if you truly wish to see taste, touch and experience traditional Japanese culture, then staying the night at a $500 ryokan is definitely something you must do. But if your budget doesn't stretch that much, a $50 ryokan is still lots of fun and you'll make a lot of friends. The winner for me was obviously the $500 ryokan. Staying at a ryokan was an extremely therapeutic and very memorable experience. Now go watch my next episode from Japan. One of the best things Exploring Hakone during a typhoon is you start drinking at 9 a.m. Because hell, what else are you gonna do? <laughs> oh boy. Kanpai! <laughs>